I traveled to Trinidad and Tobago where I hosted my first Jiu Jitsu camp and it was epic. I got to spend some time with my favorite Jiu Jitsu creators, meet and train with an amazing group of people, and even got to roll with an Olympic judoka. Christopher George who competed at the 2016 Rio Olympics in the 100 kilogram division. He's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and a black belt in Judo. And it was such an honor to roll with him. Keep in mind that we're grappling in a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu rule set which is my wheelhouse. He would absolutely destroy me with ease in a judo round. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Anyone who knows me or listens to the podcast knows that my mental health is something I often struggle with, which is why I'm happy to link up with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and is 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality that you expect from an in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash jtjj, and I've also linked them below in the description. Immediately, I'm off to a poor start as I've lost the grip fight. Chris takes the collar and sleeve grip on me and starts to move me around, looking to hit an outside trip, but I'm able to stay on my feet. Chris wasn't able to get quite enough Kazushi on me to fully rotate my upper body, which would force me to fall over in combination with the post of my leg being blocked with his outside leg. Kazushi means to off balance. I was able to redistribute my base by stepping wider. This was a close one and I'm still left without grips. I desperately search for grips but I'm having a hard time finding anything to hold onto. Now that I do have a grip on his collar, I'm in a much better position defensively to frame with it to keep him away from me. Offensively, I know engaging in upper body takedowns with him is not going to work out for me. I need to wrestle. Chris lifts his leg and I find my opportunity to snatch up a single. His legs are very heavy and I prioritize keeping my chest glued to his thigh so I don't lose connection. I start to try to run the pipe to get the finish, but as I do, I get Chris to his knees. This is running the pipe. Once I have Chris on his knees, I prioritize not letting him get to his feet. If he can get his feet on the mat, he can get back up. I want to keep him on his knees. His right knee is on the mat and I need to keep it there. So I circle to keep his weight on his knee, which makes it difficult to get that foot on the mat. I circle until I can fold his weight onto his right shin. Now that I'm on top, I need to do everything that I can to stay on top. I can feel that he wants to pull me over his body based off the grips he's taken. The grips with both his hands are pulling grips. I know that my own grip placement needs to be smart to counter the objective that he has with his grips. I base wide with my left hand in anticipation of an explosive movement and take out my near side underhook for the same reason as I know a cross face will provide greater ability to post as he tries to pull my weight to my right. Chris taking outside position on me is good for the objective that he has with it to pull me over him, but searching for underhooks or other types of inside position grips might be a better option as trying to pull me over him might rely too heavily on his size advantage because the problem with gripping on the outside is that it gives me an underhook, an inside position grip I'm able to use to assist me in knee sliding. As I pass, I'm super cautious and preemptively base wide with my hands to try to negate any attempt to roll me over. As he tries to turn into me to regard, it's again his outside position grips that give him trouble because if he were to take an underhook for himself, he'd likely be able to turn into me even with the cross face that I have. He could likely fight through it. But it's not quite possible with me having both the cross face and the underhook. I know that with the grip that he has on my belt, trying to progress to mounts or any attack is going to be risky, but I can't stay here forever either. I need to progress the roll. So I take the risk and try to enter mounts, basing wide with my left arm to be safe. But it wasn't enough and Chris pulls me forward in an attempt to reverse me. I initially base with my head to stay up before switching to my hands. I'm trying to walk on my hands to keep my weight on him and not fall forward but I'm left with nowhere to place my left arm as his right thigh is in the way of where I was trying to step with my hands and I fall forward. 
I initially take an outside position grip, but I immediately recognize my mistake and bring my right arm from over his arm to underneath it. Here's an example of gripping over the arm instead of under it and the consequence of it, as this is outside position. As I land, I try to grab Chris's leg for the single, but can't get his thigh glued to my chest and lose connection with my hands as a result. Because I don't have any grips on his leg, I can't attempt to wrestle him down anymore, so I turtle instead and wait for my opportunity to sit through into half guard. I taught John Wayne sweeps at class just prior to rolling and someone asked me if it works on big guys. I said yeah, it works great because normally it does. But I was left eating my words as I attempt to hit it on Chris. <laughs> he doesn't even move an inch. From half guard, I know off balancing him and sweeping him will be quite difficult, so I put my feet in front of him instead, which as I talk about in my Jiu Jitsu Theory course is your first layer of defense. I know that guards with my feet in front of him will manage the distance better to keep him away from me, but I'm still unsure what the path of least resistance will be to sweep or submit him. I set up grips for a triangle, but I know it'll be too risky as I risk getting stacked or passed if the triangle fails. It's not a risk that I'm willing to take. But the triangle threat causes Chris to posture up by standing to get his head further away from my hips and counter the threat of the triangle as a result. As he stands, his butt is a bit too high in the air and that's a trigger to hit a balloon sweep. So I bring my hips closer to his so I can load his weight onto my hips, extending my legs and pushing his arms towards him to rotate his body. Chris has some expected powerful core strength, so it's difficult to hit a clean, completely over the head sweep on him, as judokas and wrestlers are very good at keeping their core facing towards the mat to prevent their back from hitting the mat, as with their back on the mat, they risk getting pinned. As I take top position, I again stay cautious to make sure that I keep top position. I reach underneath his right ankle to grip the pants of his left leg, so I can control two of his legs, while only having to commit one grip to them. My right grip on his collar has the dual purpose of being able to pull him into me as well as keep him away from me by using it to frame. Just a quick note, I'm not wearing leopard print underwear. Those are my nogi shorts that I have on underneath, although I'm not sure that leopard print shorts are much better either. I take an underhook from mounts, but I'm unsure how I'll use it against him. Normally, it helps you achieve a higher mounts or hit arm triangles, but I don't think that I'll be able to jack up his arm. Before I can even try, he tries to roll me. You can see him look to use that underhook against me by trying to tie it up and blocking it from posting. But I free my arm and again have to post hard and wide to stay on top. An easier path to a higher mount may be to fake a cross collar choke and then hit an arm bar as he defends, one of my favorite traps that I like to set up. I could try the cross collar choke itself, but I risk him trapping one of those arms and rolling me over as I'd have to commit both hands to his neck and lose the ability to post with them. I fake the cross collar choke and as I shoot my right knee up higher for an arm bar, Chris drops his elbow to keep my hips away from his head. He manages to get on his side so I put my foot on the mat keeping my heel glued to him so he can't snatch up my ankle for quarter guard or half guard. He's trying to push me back so to counter I bring my left leg behind me so I can post and drive back into him using it. We end up in north-south and I start fishing for a paper cutter choke. This is what I was trying to do, loop my arm underneath the armpit and onto the collar and then use the other hand to grip the lapel and drive my forearm into the neck. But I have no luck. I know that submitting him from top position is going to be too difficult. I know that I need his back. The back is where I've had the most success dealing with bigger opponents, although it's still quite difficult to submit a stronger opponent from any position. In mount or side control, they can use their strength a bit more to their advantage to both defend and escape. Everything that I'm trying to do now is to entice Chris to turn away from me so I can attack the back. That's why I grip in a way which allows him to turn away from me freely, but he doesn't take the bait and turns towards me instead but I'm able to keep control and keep trying to turn him away to his right, which is why I direct both of his knees in that direction. Again, he turns towards me and I try to use that back exposure to jump to the other side, but he hides his back on the map before I can get there. 
Again, he turns towards me, but this time I'm able to keep him there as I spin around. Now priority is to take chest to back connection. I start lifting him to create more back exposure, pushing his head up with my right forearm. As he turtles to defend, I spin around and take that chest to back connection. Do you enjoy rolling with the big boys? Let me know and let me know what techniques you find most effective against them. I want to drag him down to the side, as now that I'm connected to him where I go, he will go. Now that I have his back, I pull the slack out of his lapel with my left hand to take a deep grip with my right hand. Once I have my elbow behind his back, the submission is basically a foregone conclusion. The elbow behind the back is what you need to focus on to both hit more bone arrow chokes, as well as prevent on you to defend them. I grab his pants and finish by pulling both his collar and pants towards me for the standard finish. Alright, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.